let's get started. Um, I think we have relatively dramatic news on the viewer front. So, Veer, why don't you give us the viewer look ahead here? All right. Well, the big thing with viewers is that we think EEP is done. Um, the, the RC was updated for that um, earlier this week, and uh, the, the current plan is that that will be promoted to the default viewer uh, early next week. Um, exact schedule TBD, but... Uh, I look for that definitely sooner rather than later. Um, so once EEP goes out, uh, yeah, obviously the graphics folks are going to start talking about what's next and having lots of good discussions there. But there's also quite a few um, other viewers that are kind of near the end of the pipeline that uh, we're going to start trying to uh, get out once uh, EEP is, is kind of no longer clogging up the works. Um, there's uh there's love me render there's the profiles viewer um there's a viewer that has some changes to some improvements to the mesh uploader that uh we need to get out as a project viewer but that is is already fairly far along in terms of uh development cycles um there's what am i not thinking of here uh you know we've got the usual assortment of main things um and I think there's at least one other thing that I'm not thinking of right now. Uh, so anyway, we will uh, we'll be trying to get all of those shipped as well because, uh, you know, a lot of them have just been waiting because procedurally we, you know, EAP was the higher priority and we didn't want to uh, kind of clog up the purging process, putting anything else out first. Um, so I hope they'll be able to kind of clear the runway a bit uh, over the next couple of months. But uh, yeah, in the in the near term, look for EEP and uh, and I uh, hope uh, hope everything continues to go well there. And Ryder is definitely deserves his happy dance. Uh, we're about a right as of as of right now, we're about a third of the way to the. Uh, level I like to see in terms of number of hours on the on a viewer before we decide that the crash rate is what it claims to be. Um, so we're we're not up to the level that I I trust the numbers too much yet, but the last few builds of EEP have all had extremely good crash rates no matter how long we accumulate hours on them. I don't think there's any reason to believe that will change so um uh, yeah as of, as of... Yeah, that one's been looking uh looking really nice in terms of crash rates for a long time i think uh we there were several fixes that went in fairly early during EAP development that uh just been you know kind of waiting for everything else to get out oh two other viewers that i forgot to mention that i should uh say something about we've got the camera presets viewer um that's another one that is that's currently an rc um and we've had it's it's had about an average of one issue active at a time for a while now. It's not always the same issue, um, but I think that is uh, that one's getting close. Um, and we've also got the uh, compiler updates viewer, which will be taking things to uh, to VS twenty seventeen. Um, that is in progress now. We've got a couple of high high uh, priority issues there uh a couple of crashers or things that aren't working right but uh uh that's that's being actively worked on and then once once that is out uh we're planning an update to the um CEF support which will give us uh more and more and newer uh, video codecs so that uh you know, more things will work in, in, in world media once that goes up. Yeah. Um, so, uh, lots coming and, uh, it's liable to be kind of a steady pace. So, um, you might want to be thinking about, uh, getting, getting EAP incorporated so that you have uh you have that behind you and 
Um, I don't think there's anything nearly as dramatic in the following releases. Uh, so that that if you're if you're doing a slow release cycle like Firestorm traditionally does, um, this would be a, a good place to draw the line, I think. So uh, let us know if there's anything you need from us on that. Um, I should say that uh, we did decide that we would support the debug variable that lets you uh, persist your personal environment setting across logins. Um, I lost that battle. Uh, so we are going to do that. But just as, you know, sort of perverse final revenge in the build we are likely to promote, if you use that and you log back in with a custom setting, it crashes. So we will fix that. It's on the known issues list. Um, but um, <laughs> it's checked into the repo, but it's not in the most, it's not in the build. Uh, so we, <laughs> sorry, I, I did really, I didn't have anything to do with it. I haven't touched any of it. Uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, who is this Mysterio developer that we see this commit from anyway? <laughs> No, the, the the fix is checked in, but it's not in the build that will that that we're currently that's currently in the RC channel. And um, our hope is that that build is the build we will promote next week. So, um, uh, so we'll we'll and and that that will get folded into some other viewer quickly, and we'll we'll get it out. Um, so. Uh, you you have probably more like three days to find a blocker, Whirly. Uh, not not that I want to challenge you or anything. I don't. I I really want to ship this this build. Uh, so, uh, all right. So that's that's the that's the hot news of the of the week, um, or of the two weeks. And uh, I don't think there are any other big things to share about what's coming. Uh, you know, we're gonna we're gonna we think changing names and EEP are that's that's enough to enough laurels to rest on for a little at least a little while. Um, so the floor is open for discussion commentary. Issues, questions, whatever. Yeah, the new mailing list. <laughs> the new mailing list is coming. It turns out that Google will only let you invite 500 people to any set of mailing lists um, per 24 hours. So I have invited the first 500 to... Uh, yesterday, I invited the first 500 to the new open source dev list. Um, if you weren't on that, um, don't worry about it. It's just that you ended up in the second half of the. Uh, there, there are slightly over a thousand subscribers on that list, uh, which surprised me. But there you go. Um, and plus uh, the um, the. The smaller announce list has fifty some. So, um, the uh, I didn't manually filter much of anybody except people who I had already filtered. Um, but the process of inviting people is knocking out a bunch of bad addresses. And um, one of the things uh, that it's rejected a couple of. I have no idea whether any of you are associated with any of these addresses, but. Um, uh, some of the addresses were addresses of other groups, and Google Groups won't let you do that. You can't subscribe a group to a group. So, at least not if they know it's a group. So, um, any of those are automatically going to have been dropped. Uh, so, uh, if you've been doing that, um, it's no longer going to work. Uh, so, 
Um, I hope to finish getting the rest of the invitations out over the weekend, um, depending on sort of how much time I end up spending on work things. Worst case, I'll get them finished on Monday. Um, the archives of the old list are up and ready to go. Uh, and I will finish updating the wiki after all the invitations have gone out. So, uh, and the email address for the list does not change. So, uh, so that's that's that for the list update. It's part of my my minor contribution, direct contribution to uplift. That's one system in the data center that we can shut down. That one's sold. We're literally just yanking the plug on it. Uh, auto update usernames and users chat logs and settings. Um, Veer, did we ever decide whether we were going to try to do it? I know we decided that we weren't going to try to do that for to hold up the release of it for that. But. Yeah, we don't uh, currently have any viewer changes related to name changes uh, in the in the pipeline. Um, if that's something that, that turns out to be causing people significant uh, stress, you know, we, we might uh, we might consider pulling something like that in, but uh, I, I don't think we currently have anything in the works for that. Yeah, I think I think the viewer doesn't necessarily. Yeah, I saw that you guys had created a wiki page for it. That's helpful. Um, I think the only, the only way you could have done that, Kitty, is to have remembered their UUID instead of their, or in addition to, rather, their name. Um, if, if you can think of a way to fix it, uh, there's no objection to doing that. But I, I don't, I don't think in our viewer we have that information. Is it? Um, if you can, uh, if if somebody wants to come up with a patch that makes those adjustments, uh, we'll we'll certainly have a good look at it and almost certainly take it. I say almost only because that's not my call, but. Yes, name changes have been very popular. Uh, Even those of us who were betting that the number of name changes would be pretty high um, have been been low. Our estimates were low. So, yeah, I guess if you if you wait ten years for people to give people the ability to do something, there's a lot of back pressure. We're glad we've been able to fix it. Uh, we do not plan to provide a way to give to get a list of previous names. 
there's no reason to do it. We have provided a way to determine whether or not some previous name is the same person as, or rather the same account as a, a present person with a different name. That's easy to do because you can translate both names to a UUID. And the UU, if the UUID is the same, that's their old name. But there's no reason to give them the to give people the ability to go in the other direction, and we don't plan to do that. It would be great if premium users could pay to change their alts names. That's a really interesting idea, Anastasia. I like that. I suggest that you put that in as a new feature request. I will vote for that in the triage meeting. I thought the exchange rate had been improving. I hadn't looked at it lately. Well, I guess improving depends on your point of view, doesn't it? Uh, you asked about a separate distance setting for shadows. Do you mean that uh, if, if an avatar is 20 meters away, then it gets rendered without a shadow? Or, or whatever threshold you set? Uh, yeah, that's, that's an, that's an interesting one, Kira. Um, I wonder whether it would be a, a performance boost. If so, it, it might well be a very good idea. Um, that's worth, yeah, that's worth thinking about. Generally, we... They're trying to have fewer settings rather than more, but uh, it does make sense that things that are farther away, you don't necessarily care as much about seeing them with, uh, with their fancy shadows, and, and uh, those can add a significant amount of expense to rendering. Yeah, we'd want to have some checks on it, um, maybe a, a cap, uh, because it, it, doesn't even, it doesn't make any sense to be even 
computing that for things that are very far away. Um, is there, we mentioned that there were plans on reworking the event system. Um, so that got part of the changes. We added repeating events. Um, there were more changes planned. I'm not sure where those are in the pipeline. I think that got deferred a little bit in favor of some other things. Um, I'm not really sure. I can I can ask Alexa about that for some for some reason she didn't make it here today. Uh, and maybe she can fill me in on where the state of that ended up. Wi-Fi doesn't let people see when another person is hiding visibility from them. I'm, I'm not sure I understand what you mean by hiding visibility. Oh, oh, whether they're online. Uh, um, yeah, I, if, if, right, yes, I, I did see that issue go by, right. Um, and I, I, I think I remembered to close it. Um, there are a zillion ways to figure out whether or not somebody's online. Um, it is, it is not a goal for us to, to be able to, to give you a way to hide that you're online. It isn't. If somebody wants to include that in a viewer, I think it's dumb, but. Um, we don't object to it. So. If you want to hide that you're online from somebody, create another account that they don't know about. That's your best bet. I... Uh, if I do recall that the way it was being done was computationally expensive, and I that is, it was like polling something, and I, I think that's really bad, and I wish that people wouldn't do features that way, um, but um, yeah, I don't, I, I think it's, it's, uh, well, whatever. But that does not fall under the category of security features. Um, we do not provide a way for you to hide that you're online, so you're not circumventing a security feature that we that we have provided. I don't know what it means to say that someone has chosen to hide their online status. Yeah. Well, if someone if someone who thinks they understand the the that complex of options and features and how they work wants to write it up for me and explain it to me, 
I'll try to be more forthcoming about it next time. Because I suspect I don't understand it thoroughly enough, which is pretty much par for the course. Uh, I, I have no idea what the other viewers are doing. How about if we just agree that we'll look into it and talk about it again next time? How about that? Any other hot topics? Thank you, Whirly. I should have known you'd have a pointer for me. I appreciate it. What was your other question, Kira? I, I don't, I don't think there's a difference right now, Kira, but I, I, we'd have to check.
Yeah, I'm not I'm not crazy about providing very long uh, about doing good support for for what users call very long distances because it really does put a huge extra load on the system. Um, and you get 512 is long, it's not very long, but anything much above that, you're starting to you're starting to create load on a lot of simulators, especially if you're in somewhere where they're all together like mainland. Right? If you're flying over mainland with a with a one kilometer draw distance, you're looking at a lot of simulators. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe we'll make the object caching and fetching so much better that it won't matter, but um, but it's a fair point. Yeah, exactly, Jody. Right, you end up with a process on every, you end up with a, a, a child agent on every region you can see. And it has to start sending you updates and, you know, you're, you're contributing to the lag on the region you can see that's three or four regions away, right? I'm not really sure that that's fair just so that you get a long view. Yeah, well, the terrain is just one object. So if you can see any part of the region, you get its whole terrain. Or you should, anyway. Yeah, it's it's just one it's just one height map. I think if you see terrain appear in fragments, then what you're seeing is not all terrain. A lot of people use objects to look like terrain, and they're not really the terrain. Yeah, mesh land parts, even prim land parts. That may just be, if, if you're really seeing real height map-based terrain, what you may be seeing is that um, the textures for some parts are taking longer to load than others. I don't know. But I do know that the terrain, the actual terrain height map is, is just one object. I suspect that's a rendering artifact rather than a, 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 a data artifact. I don't think we've really talked much about that, Veer. Did we ever come to any conclusions? I remember having those conversations about 
Sims surrounds, but uh, I don't that we not did not really any out. discussion on that recently. Uh -uh. Yeah. We do want to, and and are trying to make more progress on making. Uh, rendering costs be more accurate and more reflective of what that is more reflective of what the the real load they create and um, and improve the ability of users who you know don't have a way to understand it now um, have a way for them to better understand just what's contributing to their their performance or lack thereof. Uh, Anastasia, um, we do know about chat lag. Um, it It is not true that chat lag is, at least as far as we can tell from our metrics, it isn't true that chat lag is uniformly terrible. Um, we have had a pretty dramatic increase in usage since almost everybody in the world has been told to stay home, um, which is a good problem to have, uh, extra usage, that is. Um, so, and that that has influenced the chat servers. Some groups are much more heavily affected than others, and that's something we'd like to, It's it's primarily load, yeah. Um, yeah, it, it turns out that nearly all the failed delivery problem has been on just one of the chat servers. And we're looking into whether there's something special about that one, but it is one that has a couple of spectacularly large groups in it. Um, and at present, we can't move those around. So um, we're we're looking at whether there's something we can do there, but we we haven't made any choices. But it's it's essentially a load problem, as far as we can tell so far. Yeah, uh, making that better is something we'd love to we'd love to be able to spend some time on. But at the moment, we're focused on uplifting the services, including at some point the chat servers. And who knows? Maybe if we upload them, we'll get better performance, and it'll get better anyway. But it's probably a, a full bore solution is probably going to require some actual algorithmic changes that uh, we don't have the time to get into right now. We hope so too. That's not a scenario I'm familiar with, Jody.
uh, if if you guys can find it, if you can poke at what's going on under the covers, because I've I've never seen that. I I don't know what that what that means. I'd be I'd be willing to bet that groups that are seeing failed deliveries a lot are have UUIDs that start with the letter B. Not all of them, but we know it's happening there. They are.
sometimes long elaborate sequences of actions that users should take to fix a problem actually fix the problem by just making them wait a long time. Then again, sometimes there are connections we can't understand, but they do seem to exist. Okay, uh, I have another meeting that needs some prep time. So unless there are other hot topics, I'd like to adjourn a few minutes early um, and wish everyone a fun, safe weekend. Um, I have to stay healthy. I was saving for last. Um, I was wondering about the, the new usernames. Um, I was wondering if like the 48 you pick from, if you don't like any of them, are they going to change from time to time or are the 48 permanent? Oh, are the names going to change? The available names? Yeah, the available last names. Are they going to Oh, yeah, yeah. Time? They'll they'll change from time to time. Um, I, I have no idea at all, literally no idea at all, how frequently or uh, anything. I have seen that they have a, uh, they got a lot of suggestions. Um, sure, feel free to make some submissions. Um, uh, they have a lot of suggestions. They've saved them all up so that we don't have to think of names. We can just pick more off the lists. Um, um, I, I have no idea what what pace they might use or what criteria they might use or anything. That's, I have very carefully stayed far, far away from that. Um, but yes, that is the intent. Okay, well, that's um, good. And my other question is, is I've always wanted Chris Sexton to be my username, but they always flag Sexton as inappropriate. So I was wondering, what's the chances of Sexton ever being a last name to choose from? Um, y you know what? Uh, the so there's a there's a you know bad words filter that that gets applied to uh, names when you're putting them in. It's an automatic thing. And if you have a partial match, there are a bunch of criteria. Suffice to say, there are a bunch of criteria. And if you fail any of those tests, then it will reject the name. Um, you can put in a support ticket and say, please, can I have this name that the automatic system won't let me have? And then it will be up to the judgment of a human being. And if the human being agrees that it's OK, then they're capable of bypassing the 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 automatic filter for the first names the last names you just get what list choices are obviously um okay. but they the support reps can put in a last name that um that you might not be able to um again i have nothing whatever to do with what choices they make um, but I know that we had a bunch of people um, who were trying to enter names, and there were some odd artifacts about the way the, the automatic filter rejected some names, and I know that they fixed some by hand for people. It'll still cost you the same. Um, oh, okay. But it is possible. for, And they're... they're we, we will probably try to tweak some of those filters to make them a little bit more forgiving, but uh, it's, it's, kind of, it's, it's actually kind of a tricky thing to do. It's been real interesting seeing some of the, uh, some of the cases go by. Oh. All right. Thanks for coming, everybody. Um, I will see you in two weeks if not before.